Welcome to your favorite comic book YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jimmy and I are going to be at Heroes Con in a couple of weeks, North Carolina, Charlotte. So if you are in town and you're going to that convention, swing through, stop by the Cartoonist Kayfabe booth, say hi to us. Also, we're gearing up for Cartoonist Kayfabe comic book Christmas in July. That's going to be the last Saturday in July. Uh, what Jimmy and I are proposing, second time we're doing this. Uh, so you guys who've been with us for a while, you remember... Uh, we're taking a bunch of our comps, and we're taking lots of our doubles, our comic book duplicates, and we are going to be taking them around town, like Johnny Appleseed, putting them in those free little lending libraries around town uh, as an initiative to just raise comic book awareness, man. Get, get more comics in front of more people's faces. We do that long enough, man. We're definitely going to see results and generate uh, a, a healthy new readership. Uh, but without further ado, Jimmy... It finally came. Otomo the Complete Works 24 Animation. Akira Layouts and Keyframes 2. We did a video looking at the first. And what you get here is the middle section of the film. Parts B and C cuts into the thousands, right? Uh, so make sure you check out that, that OG video that we did. Uh, we're going to be looking at the animation artwork for the middle portion. What this book represents is the animation stuff, that the assets that Otomo kept himself. Uh, a lot of that stuff you know, fell off the back of the truck and you know, Joe Peacock got hold of him, donated his collection to uh, the Motion Picture Academy, donated it, like no loaning or anything, just gave it to them. The work here is intensely rigorous. This episode is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Three different levels will give you access to our videos before anyone else sees them to give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. And at the King Kayfaber level, you actually sit in on our recording sessions. This episode is also brought to you by the books that we make. You see our bibliography in front of you right now. In addition to all of these books, Ed Piscor's Red Room Crypto Killers, the new season of Red Room is now out. Issue one is available now. Issue two cover here. There are also a clip of variant covers by Ed, Peach Momoko, me, and many other great artists. The other big book that Ed is releasing later this year, Hip Hop Family Tree, The Omnibus, collecting all of the Hip Hop Family Tree strips in one handsome 500 plus page volume, including over 100 pages of new material. That'll be out in time for the holidays. Got to pre-order it now so Fanographics knows how many to print. There's also an omnibus collection of X-Men Grand Design coming out later this year. Again, pre-order that one today. Let them know how many you need because some of the X-Men Grand Design three volumes are out of print. So get that one big, handsome, collected volume. My next big book later this summer, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. This is available for pre-order now. Collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. Also available and back in print from Image Comics. You can also pick up my Hulk Grand Design with the fluorescent green cover. You cannot miss it. As well as Plain Janes, the first young adult graphic novel. And now back to our program. This is the, the work that gets shot to make you know the animation cells. And the way that I acquired this book, Jimmy, uh, it, it came out a couple of days after uh, I came home from Japan. But Sean, Koenji Sean, Japan Book Hunter, he was saying, uh, listen, man, if you go to the right spot, you'll be able to find the book a day or two ahead of time. But it was about three days after. And I was looking, couldn't find it. So I, what you got to do to get this at uh, you know the affordable price that you know, the, uh, the cover price or whatever is you have to, um, go through Amazon co.jp. And I was in Tokyo at the time and I, uh, and I ordered the book. There are m many ways that you could pay for the book. And one of them was that you can generate a barcode that you take to the Lawson or the Seven Eleven or the family mart. They scan that stuff and you could just pay with the cash on hand. And that's exactly what I wanted to do, man, because I had lots of yen in the pocket. And I had like the game that I like to play with with uh, myself out there is to have as few coins as possible. And I actually had a couple because there were a couple cash businesses that I had to give the loot to and get bullshit amounts of change. But uh, I ordered the book and I paid for it in like five minutes by just walking downstairs and going to the family mart and it was on its way. 
Uh, it took a little while, man. Everybody was getting their copies before me. But it showed up a day or two after uh, Tom was here. And here we are, dude, looking at, you know, the pencil artwork and these tipped-in animation cells that made up, you know, one of the most rigorous anime in, uh, in human history. When you look at this, th these pencil drawings, do you feel like this is portable to comics? Like the line that you see there... You know, you blow it out maybe in the levels or whatever, so it's a black and white line. Right, which is what they do to get the animation mm -hmm. cell. Like, the animation cells are not inked. It comes from these lines. I, yeah, I think it is, man. I think it is. Like, I think that there's more work that has to be done for, for comics. Um, it, this line, it benefits from having those painted backgrounds uh, to create the separation. Well, you know, that's the thing that... Uh, th that would be my next step in the process, too, is, like, when you think of digital coloring... I think it lends itself to this kind of line, you know, right. like a fine line where your line is doing much less of like the shading and texturing and things like that, where you're just kind of creating like, here's your line so that you can then know where to color. Right. I think that these pages are like the tipped in, like the, the key animator like does something and then Otomo or somebody like goes over top and like tightens up the piece. I think that that's what was described in the text. Yeah, there's something about looking at this kind of drawing to me that um, it feels like it changes the way I think about making a drawing for a comic. Right. You know, like, how much information do I need? You know, like, these are examples of that. So, like, whether it's a facial expression, co costume, you know, whatever the, the thing is, like, it really answers that idea of, like, how much info do you need at this stage? It's it's what Jeff Darrow does. You know, he, mm -hmm. he comes from Hanna-Barbera and, and has done animation. And uh, when you use this spare line like that, what you can tell amongst every single one of these drawings, 100% of these drawings, is those lines that are put down are in the exact correct spaces. There's no room for you to hide. Yeah, it also makes me think of all those, like, cross-section drawings that have become kind of popular. When I look at this, it's like, oh, yeah, let's see the underneath. Let's see the There's bones, bones and the muscles everything. and the cylinders. Like, all the stuff that you learn in those how-to draw books, you could almost reverse engineer from one of these drawings. Perfectly symmetrical faces, uh, the shoulders, like, drawing through the image. You could, the shoulders on the other side look like they're in the right spot. Um, feet, really, really good economy of, like, how to draw shoes and feet. Yeah, the hands. You know, look at the elegance of the hand. Yeah. You see each of the bones and stuff. Um, it feels like such a mystery until you kind of... Uh, it's almost like a math formula. Like, at some point, it just clicks. Like, oh, this is how a hand is constructed. But up until that point, it is like magic seeing a well-drawn hand. Totally. And there will be times where you get where you execute one. You know? You execute one, and then you realize, like, okay, like, I've been doing this for this long. Like, I need to, like... Instead of going convex with this line, I need to go concave, and that changes everything. I recently learned to draw the upshot of necks better, with mm. like the bottom of the jaw part, like this part, and and that was exactly it. I was going more flat, and I was wondering, like, why is it so flat? Let me just try it this way. And then what happens is you get mad at such a simple solution, and you look at your old stuff, and all you can see is the bad. Yeah, of course. I also like these kind of things that are the rougher drawings where yeah. you get to see a little bit of what they're forming. Very often, at least in a Disney animation, um, those like what, nine old men guys, like they didn't produce the tight shit. Like they are the gesture dudes and they basically they animated kind of in their style, you know, like the characters wouldn't look the way they would at the end. That was for the cleanup artists to kind of create that cohesion yeah but often when you see this kind of stuff like that might be otomo you know it's definitely a key animator who's doing those bits and like i said up front a lot of this material um comes from stuff that uh otomo has on hand this is a shit where it's like do you start off with this and then you know the background artist like paints this much and then, because, like, I'm sure some bottles are animated, like, rolling and things, but, like, what's the division of labor on the final execution of this piece? That's, that's a question. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't even like thinking about it. <laughs> such, such a such tremendous undertaking. Complex interaction between a figure and a background. Yeah. 
walks, you know, that's also instructive, I think, looking at this stuff. I was just watching people walk when I was in Maui, and it's such a peculiar thing, you know, the way one foot's up and back, even and though it's like, we're just level, is. like, it's so uh, almost counterintuitive. Yeah, yeah, the walk cycle is like the first thing that must be perfected by, by an animator, and uh, I think I, I saw something that, like, that, like, a stride is what they call twos, which is, which is 12 frames, 12 drawings. Like, 12 drawings should be, like, one, a, a complete step. There's also really good weight on most of these figures. Yeah. It's something that I've become more appreciative of. We've been looking at different artists, and especially artists that are good with figures. I feel like weight is the ultimate, like, the zen level of your knowledge of figure drawing. We spent a lot of time at the bootleg um, animation dealer at Nakano Broadway because, like, he finally when I when I first went to him, um, it was all in Japanese script. Uh, the the you know he has those like eleven by seventeen portfolios that we all have. It was all in Japanese script. And the past two times I went there, it's written in English. So you now know like which portfolios you're grabbing. Now the first time I went there, I just went through them all. <laughs> Spent about six, seven days going through just all day. And uh, this last trip, between a couple of people, Brian Moss included, he showed a couple off on the video that we did. Um, I was going to say, I bet he enjoys that, that he, stall. He bought about five pieces from Evangelion, and some some other people we were with bought some. And it was um, it was at, like stuff at this level, probably from the key animators. And you could see circle templates. Like, you know how, like, like they there are those drawing exercises where it's like the circle for the head and then you like add the jaw underneath the heads were built that way you could see the circle template wow. underneath it and then you're shocked by that yet you see where it's the the rest is built yeah that's pretty wild yeah it was really cool i love both the background drawings yes and then the figures without the backgrounds. Like, it's so interesting to me to just kind of see, you know, remove the perspective or just have the perspective. Yeah, what do the kids call it? It's a liminal space. It's it's a weird, it's it's a, like a 3D version of negative space. Right. So they started promoting the next round of uh, Complete Otomos that are coming out. And I'm very excited to report that Complete Otomo Book 1 is finally going to be coming to press, man, which is uh, the Tanko Bond called uh, A Gun Report that Sean the Book Hunter and, and myself, like, I've never seen it. Never wow. seen, never rested eyes on it. It's it's his his comic work from 71 to 73 or 74. So it's very, very early works. And I just, it's such a missing piece. I, I need to see the rawness to just have any hope of uh, getting to be better, you know? These details of the tied strings in the back, I feel like Kyle Baker would just be shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, these guys had they had the Akira committee behind them, which was a consortium of like name say five, the five ten biggest uh, Japanese corporations. Like, it is no secret that like all those like Canon and Kodak fucking decals on the Akira bike, they ain't there just for fun, you know? Like That's those funny. those businesses put in some some loot. Makes sense. There is some controversy, though, with uh, the next round of uh, Complete Otomo books, because I know specifically, I think it was uh, Rob McCollum, animator, uh, went with the art school with uh, Frank Whiteley. I think he reported that uh, that they're not shipping to France, I believe he's in. I think I saw Rob in the yeah, chat, so if he pops up, man, like, like Rob, explain that con controversy, and I'll try to relay it if we're still recording. But uh, that would be a sadness if, if it's... If it's too hard to, to get hold of uh, those books. Here's your liminal space. Right. With Kaneda and K. And you could even see, like, you you know, you could see the paper grain here. Um, I was watching a piece on uh, Disney Animation, the, uh, the first flick to really use um, the xerography was uh, Lady in the... Tr no, no, no. Uh, uh, 101 Dalmatians. So there is a like they basically got Xerox to kind of build them a special setup so that because the registration is important you know with the with, yeah. the, with the registration guides and uh there is a special machine like a to to basically cure the line because if you run an acetate on a Xerox it's fucking wet 
So there's a special kind of like heat lamps or like maybe ultraviolet or something that has to go through each fucking cell to cure it so that it doesn't smudge and it, that it's totally, you know, on there before you can go off and uh, and paint the thing. I like this because here goes the airbrush that mm -hmm. uh, Danica was talking about, like that little overspray and stuff. I like this because, you know, I don't know for sure, but I bet you if you watch uh, the flick, this vibrates as the you know like that piece just goes like that right as uh you know Kay and Kaneda are doing their chat and I love media that has some sort of that it's like a chaos it's like a right. happy accident it's a you can't completely control it hard to uh you know imagine that something like that has its place in animation but there are there's a great um Instagram that I follow and and we'll do a video on like the five Instagrams you need to be following uh, It's called one perfect frame and it, it takes shots from animations and Like in stop motion one of the reasons it's so jerky is that there's no motion blur It's frame. It's photograph photograph photograph, you know yeah. 24 a second. So there's no motion blur, but if you looked at even this movement of my hand there's a blur of motion that makes it more in, in sync on one perfect frame there will be a lot of motion uh pieces from chuck jones cartoons or something like this and they have to build in that motion blur to create to create the fluidity of the animation and that speaks to that chaos chaos like it's it's people with brushes on a piece of plastic making fucking crazy brush strokes you know what happens if you like i imagine in the process when it's time to do a cell you do that part first, so if you fuck it up, you didn't waste a lot of time coloring foghorn leghorn right. or something. But here it is, man. The new Akira animation book is out. Lots of you guys have, lots of you guys got it before I did and have <laughs> uh, been posting it online. And for those of you who are unaware, it's out there. You could probably find it on um, American, just eBay.com at this point. Um, there will probably be a little bit of a premium added on to that uh just from you know the 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 ebay sellers but uh this is a required edition if you are a uh akira fan katsuhiro otomo fan this checks off a lot of boxes and it's very instructive very inspirational to see images like this at that raw stage and to realize oh it's all there it's all there also just as a book fan i love how these books feel yeah I wish there was more of that kind of attention to detail in book production where it's like, you know what? I love this feeling. I want to do a book that feels this way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, you could just tell a lot of TLC was put into the uh, construction of these books. And this is a tome, you know, this is 700 pages a book or something, man. 7,700 yen, about 60 bucks, I believe, man, uh, with, uh, shipping to the States. I think it was, uh, um, 20 bucks. So you're looking at seventy, eighty dollars for these books, which uh, you know if you could find something comparable on eBay, like you're not getting you're not getting waxed. But had to bring it to the attention of the cartoonist kayfabe audience out there. Did Rob McCollin, uh chime in with any of the uh, the shipping stuff? No, you don't see anything in the chat? No, not yet. Let's get out of here, Jimmy. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy and I are going to be going to Heroes Con in a couple of weeks, mid-June, uh, to uh, celebrate Cartoonist Kayfabe and to uh, meet you guys. So put on your Cartoonist Kayfabe shirts, come see us, shake hands, uh, grab some comics, chop it up with us, man. Uh, it's always fun to see you guys down there in North Carolina. And I think we're going to do, the other big show we're going to do is Baltimore Comic Con, right? That We'll promote that later. Also, July is coming sooner than later, and uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July is the last Saturday of July. This is where we're going to be taking our comp copies and our duplicate comics that have come in from you, the Kayfabers, or just from our own digs of the past year. We're going to supply our free little lending libraries around uh, the city of Pittsburgh and our neighborhood specifically with boatloads of comics for people to get introduced to them, man. You put those comics facing out so that people see that arresting imagery and can't help but come over. I, I, uh, I put a, an Akira volume in uh, a lending library last year. Uh, we, we're going to want you guys to tag Cartoonist Kayfabe in those images. We shared hundreds of them 
uh, throughout our social media. And it was gratifying to see that, you know, thousands of people were participating in that last year. We've got 20,000 or so more subscribers. Let's, let's, let's make that 2000 people going out, uh, sharing their comics and help create a new comic readership, man. The uh, rising tide raises all ships. And if there are more readers out there, uh, there are better comics that can be made. But the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Jimmy, tell the people what we got. Street Angel, Deadly Girl, Alive, and Street Angel, Princess of Poverty. We'll collect all of my Street Angel comics from Image Comics. It'll be out later this summer. Uh, Deadly Girl, Alive, there's a new printing that is available now. Hulk Grand Design, the oversized Treasury Edition, is out now in stores everywhere while supplies last fluorescent green cover you can see it from the parking lot so pick that one up before it's gone the plain janes the first young adult graphic novel is available in print wherever books are bought and sold and you can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see the latest comics i am making and serializing there big year 2023 hip-hop family tree omnibus is coming to you at the end of the year in time for the holidays uh it's going to collect the four volumes of hip-hop family tree uh treasury editions that are out there right now it's also going to have 140 pages of stuff that is not in those first four volumes. I drew a bunch of artwork, uh, including this cover, for uh, exclusively for this big book. Uh, so I'm very excited to, to get that out there. And you guys have been showing up in a big way in pre-orders. I've been hearing from the publisher, so thank you very much. Uh, X-Men Grand Design is coming back to print in a singular trade paperback edition, collecting all three volumes. Uh, so they're calling it the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy. Scoop that up in time for the holidays. And uh, the focus at the moment is Red Room Crypto Killers. This is the cover to issue number one that came out in May. You see it on the rack. Give it, give it a shot. This is the cover to issue number two. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Each of these issues is completely self-contained. So if you see an issue of Red Room out there, give it a shot. See if you dig it. If it's, uh, if it's your vibe, try some more. Two, two trade paperbacks, Antisocial Network, and Trigger Warnings are out there. And uh, you might find WYSIWYG if you're lucky. What else do we have going on, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All great ways to support the Cartoonist KFAB channel. Give them those marching orders and we'll be on our way. Read more manga.